Ready to dive into the world of AI for entrepreneurs? We're about to take a deep dive into an episode of the Tice Entrepreneurs Podcast that really got me thinking. It's all about how entrepreneurs can ride the wave of AI innovation. You know, what really struck me about this Tice episode is how they frame the whole AI revolution. It's like they compare it to these past tech booms, you know, like the internet or smartphones, even cryptocurrency. Yeah, that historical parallel really stood out to me too. And you know, it's interesting. They argue that in those past revolutions, the ones who jumped in early, their early adopters, they were often the ones who really hit it big. Exactly. They saw the potential before anyone else did, took those risks, experimented, and figured out how to actually use these new tools to create value. So thinking back to the internet boom, it wasn't just about setting up a website. It was about understanding how the internet was changing, like fundamentally changing the way we live and work. Right. And those who understood that shift early on, they created these completely new business models. Remember when ordering a pizza online was like, whoa, that's crazy. Now it's just like Tuesday night. Yeah, exactly. It's totally normal now. The internet created e-commerce giants, online marketplaces, even social media, which, I mean, revolutionized how we communicate. And that's what's so exciting about AI, right? It has the potential to be just as disruptive, maybe even more so. The Tice episode really emphasizes AI is not some far off thing. It's happening right now and it's changing everything. Absolutely. And they actually make this pretty bold claim. They say this AI revolution is a bigger opportunity for startups than it is for these giant established companies. Really? Bigger than for those huge corporations with tons of resources? That's kind of surprising. It might seem counterintuitive, but think about it. Startups are agile, right? They can move quickly. They don't have all that bureaucracy, those old legacy systems, or that fear of, you know, disrupting their own existing business. It lets startups experiment with AI much faster, implement solutions quickly, and adapt to this landscape that's constantly changing. So they're like speedboats weaving through the waves while these giant companies are like trying to turn these huge ships. Exactly. And we're already seeing this happen in the real world. Think about startups using AI to give customers these super personalized experiences in very specific markets. They can gather and analyze data in ways that were impossible before. It creates this level of customization that big companies just can't match. And it's not just about personalization, yeah. right? They talked about how startups are using AI for prototyping and developing products super fast. Mm -hmm. Imagine designing and testing tons of product versions in like a fraction of the time. That's a game changer. Absolutely. And this isn't limited to one industry. We're seeing AI powered startups popping up everywhere. Healthcare, finance, education, you name it. It's really exciting to see all the possibilities. So with all this talk about startups and AI, I'm sure people are thinking, OK, what skills do I need to actually thrive in this new world? The good news is you don't have to go back to school for a computer science degree. Yeah, the Tice episode gets really practical about that. They emphasize that building those AI skills is super important, but it's surprisingly accessible. You don't need a formal education to get started. OK, so no PhD required. Yeah. What are some ways that someone who's not a coding whiz can start building these AI skills? Like, where do you even begin? Well, they talk a lot about online learning. There are these platforms like Coursera and edX offering courses from you know top universities and companies. They cover everything from the basics of AI to really advanced applications. And a lot of them are free or pretty affordable. So you're saying I could learn from the same people teaching at like MIT or Stanford. Exactly. And there's also this whole world of open source projects. These are like gold mines of AI tools and frameworks that anyone can use. It's amazing. You can actually experiment with the same technology that companies like Google or Facebook are using. That's incredible. But let's be real. It's easy to get overwhelmed with all this information. The Tice episode really pushes the idea of action, you know, actually doing something instead of just reading about it. They urge listeners to just jump in, experiment, learn by doing. I totally agree. It's like learning to ride a bike. Reading about it only gets you so far you have to actually get on the bike and start pedaling. AI is kind of the same way. So what are some specific things listeners can do to start experimenting with AI? Like this week, we're talking about real actionable steps, not just theory. Well, there are tons of user friendly AI tools out there that don't require any coding. For example, you could try one of those AI writing assistants for your next blog post or some marketing copy. So how does that actually work? Well, you can use them to generate ideas, improve your writing, or even optimize your content for search engines. That's a great starting point. And for those who are feeling a bit more adventurous, 
There are platforms that let you build these basic AI models without writing any code. You can actually train a model to recognize objects in images, classify text, or even make predictions based on data. So it's about getting your hands dirty and seeing how powerful AI can be. Exactly. And the best part is, as you play around with these tools, you'll start to understand AI better. You'll see how you can use it in your own business or career in ways you might not have thought of before. It's like training your AI muscles. And speaking of muscles, I know some people are worried AI is going to replace jobs. But the Tice episode has a pretty reassuring take on that. They argue that AI will change jobs, not eliminate them entirely. It's a really important point. Think about computers. When computers came along, they didn't cause mass unemployment. They changed how we worked, created new jobs, and required new skills. AI will probably follow a similar path. So instead of fearing AI, we should be thinking about how to use it to our advantage. Absolutely. AI is a tool, and like any tool, it can be used in good ways or bad ways. It's up to us as entrepreneurs to make sure we use AI ethically and responsibly to build a better future. And that brings us to another really important part that the Tice episode talks about human skills in an AI world. This is getting to the heart of what makes us human, right? What makes us different from even really advanced machines. Exactly. And the Tice episode makes a compelling case that while technical skills are important, they're only part of the picture. So what are these other essential skills for succeeding in the AI age? What are those uniquely human things we need to develop? We'll uncover that and more when we continue our deep dive in just a moment. So before the break, we were discussing how AI might actually change the nature of work rather than completely replacing us. And the Tice episode really emphasizes that in this AI world, certain human skills are going to be even more valuable. Okay, I'm really interested to hear more about that. We've talked about the importance of technical skills, but what are these other crucial skills that the Tice folks highlight? Well, they talk a lot about critical thinking, problem solving, creativity. You know, those skills that are really difficult for AI to replicate. It's interesting because those skills often get overshadowed when we talk about technology. Mm -hmm. We tend to focus so much on the technical side, but it's those human abilities that will really set us apart. You're absolutely right. And think about it. Those skills are so versatile. They're not limited to one job or industry. They're the foundation for success in pretty much any field, especially in a world that's constantly changing and evolving because of things like AI. So it's not just about knowing how to code or use these AI tools. It's also about developing that adaptable mindset, being able to think critically and creatively, especially when things get complex. Exactly. And here's where I think the Tice episode makes a brilliant connection back to the entrepreneurial spirit. Entrepreneurs are already used to dealing with uncertainty and rapid change. They're natural problem solvers and innovators. So in a way, they're already wired for this AI-driven world. Exactly. And the Tice episode encourages everyone to embrace that entrepreneurial mindset. Don't just watch this AI revolution happen. Participate in it. Experiment. Take some risks. And learn by doing. I love that. It's all about having a growth mindset. Seeing setbacks not as failures, but as opportunities to learn and get better. That's it. That mentality is key when it comes to AI. You're going to run into tools that don't quite work or models that don't perform as expected. But that's all part of it. It's about embracing those challenges, figuring out what went wrong and using that to make your next attempt even better. It's like that famous Thomas Edison quote, I haven't failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Exactly. And this is where the Tice folks offer some really good advice. They encourage everyone to start small. Experiment with AI tools in your current role, whatever that might be, and gradually build your skills and confidence. Start small, think big. I like that. So what are some practical ways people can start using AI in their work without getting overwhelmed? The Tice episode talks about some really easy ways to use AI to get things done faster, automate tasks, and even get some French insights. For example, in marketing and sales, there are AI tools that can help personalize your messages, target the right customers, and even automate parts of the sales process. So instead of sending the same generic email to everyone, you can use AI to tailor your message to each individual customer. Exactly. You can target your message based on their preferences and past behavior, which can make a huge difference in your results. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. What are some other examples? Well, you could use AI-powered chatbots for customer support. They can handle basic questions, qualify leads, and provide 24-7 service, which frees up your human team to focus on more complex issues. 
That's a great example. I'm really starting to see how AI can be a game changer for businesses of all sizes. The Tice episode also mentioned AI and its impact on content creation. Are we talking about robot novelists here? Not quite robot novelists, but AI writing assistants are getting super sophisticated. They can help with things like brainstorming ideas, writing articles and blog posts, even creating scripts. Yeah. I was a little worried about AI taking over my job, but <laughs> seriously, it sounds like AI can be a really powerful tool for anyone who creates content, whether it's writing, marketing materials, or even podcasting like us. For sure. And then there's the whole area of data analysis. This is a big one for startups, especially because they often have limited resources and need to make the most of the data they collect. Right, because data is everywhere these days, but actually understanding it can be tough. How can AI help us get real value from all that data? AI is incredibly good at spotting patterns and trends that humans might miss. Imagine analyzing your customer data and being able to predict what products they're most likely to buy next, or seeing patterns in website traffic to optimize your marketing. It's like having a crystal ball that actually works. But with all these cool AI tools available, it's easy to get carried away and want to use them for everything. The Tice episode talks about the importance of having a clear strategy for adopting AI. That's a really good point. Don't just use AI for the sake of it. It's not a magic solution. Ask yourself, what are my goals? What problems am I trying to solve? And how can AI help me achieve those things? So it's all about being intentional and making sure that AI actually fits into your overall business plan. Absolutely. And it can be helpful to have at least a basic understanding of the different types of AI and how they're used. The TICE episode does a great job of breaking down key concepts like machine learning, deep learning, and natural language processing. I have to admit, those terms can be a little intimidating. Do entrepreneurs really need to understand those concepts even if they're not data scientists. Well, even a basic grasp of those concepts can help you choose the right AI tools for your needs. It also means you can have more informed conversations with developers or data scientists if you decide to bring in some outside help. It's like learning the language so you can actually communicate what you're trying to achieve. Exactly. And as you start using AI more and more in your business, it's important to build a culture that values data. What does that mean exactly? Is it just about collecting lots of data? It's more than just collecting data. It's about understanding that data is what powers AI. The more high quality data you have, the better your AI is going to perform. So it's about collecting the right data, organizing it, making sure it's accurate, and making it accessible to those AI tools. So it's like building a strong foundation for AI to do its thing. Exactly. It's about having a culture where everyone understands the importance of data, where decisions are made based on evidence, and where things like data privacy and security are taken seriously. Those are all critical points, especially as we use more data and AI in everything we do. The Tice episode really emphasizes that this AI revolution is here to stay. It's such an exciting time to be an entrepreneur. It opens up so many possibilities to innovate, disrupt things, and create businesses that solve real problems in ways we never could before. I couldn't agree more, but it's also a call to action. Don't just sit back and watch, get involved, learn new skills, try new things, and really embrace the power of AI. I love that message, it's really empowering. As we wrap up this part of our deep dive, I think it's important to remember that while AI is a powerful tool, it can't replace human creativity, ingenuity, and empathy. Those are the qualities that will ultimately shape the future we build with AI. We'll explore that idea even further when we come back for the final part of our deep dive. And we're back for our final look at AI for entrepreneurs. So we've talked about the skills you need, the right mindset, and all those cool AI tools. But as we wrap up, I wanted to touch on a theme that really runs through the entire Tice episode the human side of AI. You're so right. The Tice folks really don't shy away from the big questions, do they? They keep emphasizing that AI is powerful, but it's still a tool, a tool built by humans to be used by humans. And that brings up some important questions about how we shape the future with it, you know? Yeah, it's like a reminder that even when we talk about algorithms and data, it all comes back to people in the end. Absolutely. And one of the most insightful things I took away from the Tice episode is this idea. They said, if the internet was all about connecting information, the AI age is about understanding it. That's a really interesting way to think about it. So it's not just about having tons of data. It's about using AI to actually make sense of it, to pull out meaningful insights and make better decisions. Exactly. And they went on to say that it's about using AI to make ourselves better, to augment our intelligence and to solve problems in ways that we just couldn't before. So it's like 
AI can be a partner in our entrepreneurial journey, helping us to see things more clearly, make those smarter decisions and reach our goals. I love that way of putting it. It's a partnership. And we have to remember, this journey is just beginning. AI is still pretty young, which means the possibilities are huge for those willing to explore, experiment, and really push those boundaries. It's like those early pioneers heading west. There's a sense of adventure, of uncharted territory, and the potential to discover something amazing. That's such a great comparison. And just like those pioneers, the entrepreneurs who are brave enough to embrace AI now, they're going to be the ones shaping the future, both for their industries and the world. So as we wrap up our deep dive into AI for entrepreneurs, what's that one key message you want listeners to walk away with? I think the Tice episode sums it up perfectly. Don't be afraid to just dive in, yeah. learn the basics, play around with the tools and start thinking about how you can use AI to really take your entrepreneurial journey to that next level. I couldn't agree more. It's an incredible time to be an entrepreneur. The possibilities are truly limitless. So go out there explore, create, and use AI to build the future you imagine. And remember, the journey is just as important as the destination. Enjoy the ride, everyone. 